thanks for uh, the interview. And uh, delighted to have you. I have uh, talked to you before, and uh, you have had a great experience, background in uh, geocultural, managing geocultural issues at Microsoft. And uh, Microsoft being such a global company, obviously you have these geocultural challenges and issues. So my question really is to you about how do you proactively manage geocultural risk in terms of content uh, delivery and content creation? Sure. So, um, so just to clarify, my role in the company is really to help the um, engineering and marketing groups with preparing content that's appropriate to ship internationally. Okay. Um, and so at our charter is really helping them understand you know, what that means as far as meeting specific market expectations and requirements. I think the term geocultural is even an interesting concept because really it's about um, multiculturalism, multi geography. Um, our customers are multilingual and multi-geo, um, and that means the, company, the country that they um, came from, their country of origin, as well as their current country of location, if that's different. Right. It's also where they travel, where they work, live, and play. Um, and the language or languages that they speak, right. and that may be speak, speaking verbally or written, and those, right. those languages may be different. So, um, so that's really where the challenge lies, particularly for a company like ours that is shipping so many locations in the world. So what my team does is help um, understand and prepare documentation around specific markets, their requirements, which some are legal, um, and their expectations. On one level, it's about um, making sure that you don't do something wrong, land an image or a word that, that's offensive potentially mm -hmm. um, or doesn't make sense. But on the other hand, it's about getting it right and the opportunities that come from really um, understanding a market enough to get their language, their culture, their sensibilities right. So how do you ensure to some extent the quality in terms of that the content is not tipping over the geocultural edge on the wrong side? Yeah. So um, we're a rather small team that is a central function. So what we do is we help teach the rest of the company how to spot the issues. It's kind of the analogy of a plane and where the windows are up as you take off and land because more eyes out the window, more eyes spotting issues. And so we provide training and tools to help the teams check their content against our resources before so it goes it, out the door. So is it like a cultural awareness, international business class or something? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we teach a lot by examples. So okay. scenarios where something didn't land as it was expected and what the repercussions of that could be. Okay. And another aspect to that is like you mentioned, you are in content creation aspect also. How do you ensure that that the content is, before it is culturally localized, customized, et cetera, it is cultural neutral, right? So do you, how do you ensure cultural neutrality and standardization at the, at the back end? I think that's a, a, a challenge that we would face and other companies would face. Um, we're based in the US, mm -hmm. um, so we have large numbers of folks who are creating content right. in US English. Right. Our goal is to get that to be global English to use uh, resources like style guides, which, mm -hmm. which we produce um, in okay. English and in all the other languages, uh, and to help create a bar of quality mm -hmm. that then allows us to take that content into the right languages and customized and localized correctly. Okay, and one last question really, I don't want to put you in the spot, but um, can you give some examples of some icons, specifically you know, dealing with Microsoft products, uh, which are really challenging when you're adapting it across the countries? I think a really, uh, it's not a Microsoft example, but a really okay. obvious one would be the thumbs up on Facebook. Uh, so yeah. we, yeah. Um, the thumbs up, hand gestures in particular can be very problematic. Right. Now Facebook has used the thumbs up long enough that I think it's you know become associated with Facebook more than as an offensive gesture. But um, we do deal with things like a symbol meaning something different in one culture than it would in another, or um, an image not being appropriate worldwide. And so I think you know we, we see examples of that and try to catch them before before, before, the, before our customer does. Right. 
Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you so much. Absolutely. Great geocultural insights there. Thank you.